Hi, this is Rick Bice with Bice Fit Exercises on behalf of Edmonds Park and Recreation. Today we're going to go through a circuit training class. Uh, what we'll do is we'll alternate between strength training exercises for the muscles, bones, and connective tissues, and then cardiovascular exercise for the heart, lungs, and circulatory system. Uh, what we'll do, it's all timed, so what we'll do is we'll do uh, a minute on an exercise. We'll take a 30 second break. We'll do another minute on the same exercise or something very similar and then we'll move on to the next exercise. So I'll call all those out uh, as they happen. Uh, what you'll need for this uh, exercise program today is a chair over here, um, maybe some, some light to medium dumbbells and some resistance tubing or band, uh, maybe light or medium, whatever you have on that, with or without handles, uh, doesn't matter on that. Um, we will begin with a warm up. We will go through the exercises, uh, then we'll finish off with a cool down and then some stretches at the end. Uh, this is all at your own pace. So we strive for, for a minute's worth of work. Uh, if you need to take your breaks you know, quicker than that, or if, if uh, by the end of the minute you're, you're not tired or fatigued, you could just go straight through uh, that break that we have. Uh, so it's all up to you, um, the kind of resistance you use, uh, whatever works for your body. Uh, make sure your surrounding area is, is clear, that you've got room to move around, you know, arms width sort of stuff at least. Uh, you know, you have a proper footwear for, for the floor that you have. You know, if, if you've got slippery hardwoods, make sure that you're wearing good shoes that, that aren't going to slip and slide. Uh, if you've got thick carpet, making sure that your feet aren't going to get, you know, it isn't going to get uh, uh, caught on the carpet or something and, and trip you up. So uh, just being careful. All right, let's begin. Okay, here we go. We're going to start the warm-up. So let's start moving around here. Nice and gentle. We are just looking to get the heart rate uh, pumped up just a little bit. A little more than normal. Barely break a light sweat. Not much uh, going on here. We want to get some blood flow uh, to the muscles. We want to mimic some of the movements that we'll be doing. To, to get the joints ready for, uh, for action. Stretch out the lungs a little bit, get our breathing up. Very gentle, very easy. We'll go for about two minutes or so. All right, bend the knees. Again, nice and slow and controlled. Nice warm up, uh, you know, could be walking outside, walking up and down stairs. Maybe you've got a treadmill or bicycle or rowing machine, uh, right, you know, in the same room with you. Maybe you've got uh, dance moves from, uh, you know, classes you've been to, line dancing or swing dancing, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you've done, other exercise classes, Zumba, whatever works for you. Just a little bit here. Got about 30 more seconds and we'll move on to our first exercise. We'll take about a 30 second break or so before that happens in between uh, cardio and the exercise here. Just keep moving. Consistent moving. Doesn't matter if it's slow or fast. It's whatever uh, works for you. About five more seconds. We'll take a break here. All right. All right, next up here we have the uh, sit to stand. So get your chair ready. Uh, again, something solid. Um, what you want to make sure that is that. Uh, that chair is not going to slide or move around. So if it's sitting on hardwoods, uh, you know, maybe putting it on a mat, something uh, non-slip that's not going to allow that chair to slide around. Uh, if you're on carpet, probably okay. You can also put the chair against a wall or against a, a heavy piece of furniture, something that keeps it from moving. So basically, I'm just going to take a seat here 
and I'm going to stand up and then I'm going to take a seat. Now I don't want that chair moving or sliding around so I want to make sure that it's in, in a sturdy place that it's not going to move. So feet about hip to shoulder width apart about you know six inches five or six inches from the chair or so i'm sitting more on the front part of the chair as opposed to the whole chair i'm going to lean forward i'm going to stand up and i'm going to stick my rear out and sit back now i need to know where that chair is the whole time so i'm not going to stand up and, and take a step or two because then i'm i don't know where that chair is right so stand up and sit down all right let's go up and down Sticking your butt out, keeping the weight on your heels more so when you sit down. Again, I'm not moving my feet. That way I know where that chair is. And as long as that chair is not sliding every time I sit down or get up, then uh, I should be safe. So again, make sure you know where that chair is. Now, we got about 10 seconds or so. Lean forward and stand up. Take a seat, keeping my head and chest facing forward the whole time. All right, take a break there. So when you're uh, standing and sitting, making sure that, again, weight's on the heels, sticking the rear out, head and chest is gonna face forward, okay? I'm not bending over, I'm gonna sit down. Now, if you want a little bit more work, just barely touch the chair with your rump and stand back up. So instead of sitting and, co and committing and putting full weight on the chair, just barely touch it and back up. Barely touch and back up, as opposed to fully taking a seat and standing back up. So it, it all depends on, on what you, you know, what kind of work you want, all right? All right, second set, let's get going here. I'm gonna sit and commit every time, just like a, like a normal seat. If I was gonna sit on a chair and stand back up, this is practice. I'm gonna lean over. So the weight's over my feet when I stand. I don't want to lean over too far. I don't want to fall over on my face or something or lose balance. But it's a lot easier to stand up over your feet than to try to stand up when your weight is behind your feet. There we go. Got about 15 more seconds before our 30 second break uh, between exercises. Keep breathing the whole time. Don't hold your breath. All right, four seconds. All right, nice job. Okay, you can get rid of your chair here and grab your uh, tubing, your resistance band, your resistance tubing, whatever you got. Here we're going to do something for the chest muscles, pectorals, chest, front shoulder deltoids, and the rear part of the upper arm, the triceps. So band or tubing goes around your back, okay, right at armpit level. And what you're going to do is you're going to push out. Now, I took the handles off my band. Uh, you know, th this band's too long if I use the handles. What I want is to start a little closer to the armpit area. You know, if I need to, to work my way back a little bit, I can do that too. So let's go ahead and start pushing out and back in. All right. So push all the way out and then back in. Nice and firm grip on the band or the handles or whatever you've got. Whatever kind of resistance is up to you, and that will you know depend on you know what strength of band you have, how you know how thick that is, or how far you you know you grab back. If I want it a little bit tougher, I'm going to grab back further on the band. If I want it easier, I'm going to allow the hands to come forward when I start. So just depending on what works for you. Remember, we try for about a minute's worth of work. We've got about eight seconds here. Keep breathing. Good posture, standing nice and tall. All right, take a break. So remember, bracing your core, so you're gonna tighten things up a little bit. You're gonna pelvic tilt just slightly, keeping the, the cheeks nice and tight on the rump. You don't want anything moving but your shoulders, chest, and arms. Don't want any hips going at all, all right? So really bracing, keeping everything as tight as you can. And we'll start back in about eight seconds here. So again, find your position. 
you know, we're trying to go for a whole minute. So, you know, figure out a resistance or a band or, or where to hold on the band that works for you. All right, let's go. Here we go. And you can go a little wider and come in every time, or you can just go straight out. Elbows can be in at your side more or out just a little bit. Kind of just depends on what's comfortable for you. Palms will be facing in most likely as opposed to uh, facing down. It kind of just depends on what you can grab onto. If you have handles and your bands, uh, you know, the length that it needs to be that you can use your handles, then having those palms down or in is, is going to be fine. Whatever, whatever you can do that feels comfortable on your wrists and forearms. Keep breathing. Got about 10 seconds here. Nice and tight on the abdominals. Almost there. All right, take a break. So keep your uh, rubber tubing because the next exercise is going to use the uh, uh, your resistance tubing also or resistance band again, whatever you're using. Uh, next one we have is the shoulder blade row. So this one's going to be in front of you. Palms are going to be down on this. Now, if you don't want things jiggling around, what you can do is start palms down, give a wrap. Same thing here. Gives you a little tighter grip, then you don't have to grip as much also, especially if gripping is, is tough for you. So what we're going to do here is start with palms in front of you, and then you're going to bring them to your armpits. And as you do that, hands are going to come apart, elbows go backwards, and you're squeezing the shoulder blades together. All right, let's go ahead and get moving here. This sort of motion here. So elbows go back, squeeze the shoulder blades. Elbows back, squeeze the shoulder blades. This sort of motion here. Elbows go back, squeeze your shoulder blades towards your spine. Hands are coming apart a little bit, but you, you don't want those hands going too far apart. You want them always to be about the same width as your elbows. I don't want your elbows in and your hands coming apart. I want, if your hands come apart, elbows come apart also. So elbows are going to be away from the body, squeezing the shoulder blades together. All right, we got about five seconds. Keep breathing. And again, just like the one we did before, bracing the abdominals. Take a break. So bracing the abdominals, making sure a little bit of a pelvic tilt. All right, everything's tight. No hips moving or anything like that. It's all just upper body. Shoulder blades, shoulders, arms, a little bit of elbow movement. Okay. So shake those shoulders out. Things are burning a little bit. We're getting rear deltoid in the back of the shoulder. We're getting upper back muscles between the shoulder blades, rhomboids. A little bit of biceps in the upper arm happening. This is a great one for posture. If you have postural issues, you know, if you tend to, to have a posture that kind of looks like this, strengthening that upper back will help. All right, let's get moving here. And if you want more resistance, again, either, you know, grabbing a, a better band, or not better, you know, a stronger, thicker band, or just grabbing a little bit tighter, hands starting closer together. And if, you know, things are getting too tiring or, you know, 30 seconds in, you're feeling too much, then just back off a little bit. Yeah, adjust on the fly, whatever you need to do. We got about 20 seconds left. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Hands are about chest height. Elbows are coming out to your sides. Shoulder blades are being squeezed together. We got a couple more seconds here. All right, well done. We got a cardiovascular here, so we'll take a 30 second break, and then we're gonna do cardio. So remember, cardio is, is basically like what we did for the warm up, just a little bit more intense and a little longer. We'll go about uh, two minutes or so, between two, between two and two and a half minutes uh, for the cardio to start. So catching your breath, you know, if you want a little more work, you know, right after we get done with that exercise, just start right in. But basically, we're just gonna move around. We want to keep the heart rate elevated throughout the whole uh, time, all right? Uh, sometimes it'll slow down and, and die down a little bit as we do some of the strength training. And then when you get to one of these cardios, 
it'll uh, get going again a little bit harder and then it'll start dying down as we do some some strength training and then we'll spike it back up with some cardio again whatever movements you need to keep your heart rate elevated maybe you're in your garage and you and you have room enough for a jump rope uh, you know again maybe you're in the same room with a treadmill or a rower or elliptical machine you can always jump on that for two minutes you know if you've taken aerobics classes or zumba classes or, or you know boxing classes you know whatever gets your heart rate elevated just kind of moving around trying to keep the heart rate elevated kind of playing around with my steps side to side or forward to back whatever works for you We got about a minute and 15 seconds, so keep going. All right. You want to get your breathing going, get your heart rate going. Watch your balance. Make sure you have enough room around you that you're not whacking into things or tripping over things. Uh, if you've got carpet, you know, making sure you're not catching your toes or heels accidentally on something. All right, safety is paramount. I got about 35 seconds, keep going. Keep breathing. If you're getting out of breath, that's good. That's what we're looking for. seconds almost there and then we got our, our break between exercises here all right nice take a break there uh, next one we're gonna do is a rocking horse with bicep curl so grab a couple small dumbbells again Again, firm grip, dry hands, bicep curl, this sort of movement here, straightening the elbows, bending the elbows fully, nice and controlled, no momentum. All right, rocking horse. Think of uh, like a rocking chair back and forth. We're going to start in this motion here, knee up, kind of back on my, weight on my back foot. Now I'm going to step a big step forward, bending the knee as if I'm kicking myself in the rear. And then I'm going to step back, knee up, step forward. All right, this sort of motion here. Again, it's a big step. I'm not, you know, not a tiny little step here. Nice big step. Knee up as high as you can comfortably. Bend in the knee as, as far as you can. And then if you want, you can add bicep curls in. Okay, this sort of motion here. Whatever works with your coordination, with your balance, here we're getting bicep muscles in the upper arm, hip flexors in the front of the hip, hamstrings in the back of the thigh, balance and coordination of course too. No momentum, less than five seconds, we'll take a break. All right, nice job. And then what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll step forward and do the opposite leg for this next one. Okay. Again, whatever works for you, balance coordination. This is going to keep the heart rate going, of course. We'll get a little bit of muscles in the hips and the uh, you know, upper thigh and the rear. Uh, and then biceps and arms. 10 seconds till we start again. Remember, you know, if, if it's a little much for your coordination or your balance, uh, break it break it apart. You know, get rid of the weights, hold on to your chair or wall or something and do the do the rocking horse. I did that, didn't I? Again, you can kind of piece this out into just the bicep curls. All right, we're just the rocking horse. It all depends on what's safe for you. Give you a front view here. Controlled. 
20 seconds. And you can allow the palms to stay forward or you can rotate in and out every time. Eight seconds. All right, nice job. Okay, whew. Um, keep your dumbbells. Uh, we're gonna do upright row with a heel raise. So uh, if you want, you can use two dumbbells holding like this or one dumbbell, you know, or a kettlebell, whatever you have. This sort of motion here. I'll do with one and then I'll do with two. Uh, 10 more seconds, so what we'll do is stand up nice and tall and straight. Weight's gonna be close to your body. Bring it up to about chest, maybe armpit level. Elbows are gonna be slightly higher than hands, okay? Like a, a very wide letter V, and then back down. And then we'll do a heel raise. So up on the toes and down, and we'll alternate back and forth. Go ahead and start. Here we're working deltoids in the shoulders, but mostly uh, upper trapezius also between the neck and shoulder. Think about hunching up at the top. A little bit of a hunch and shrug at the top. And then gastrocnemius and the calves. You can try to hold the outsides of those dumbbells more. If you have a couple small cans of soup, sometimes it's easier to have the hands more apart as you do this, as opposed to having them in real close, okay? So I'll show on the second set here. All right, take a break there. So these muscles along here between the neck and shoulder. And then again, smaller dumbbells. Um, you know, you can bring them together and try to hold them close as if they're touching or keep them apart a little bit. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter. Wrists are just going to be try to be neutral. Uh, elbows are going to go up just about the height of, of uh, parallel to the floor, or just a little bit higher as you shrug slightly. Okay. All right, another set. Let's go. So feet about hip width apart, up on the toes, and then up here. Again, keep that weight fairly close to you. It's just hanging down, barely scraping the body, maybe. Keep it far enough away from your body uh, so that it's not touching you. And you go up as high as you feel comfortable. The higher you go, it, it does get a little hot, you know, harder and tougher on the shoulders. So if you've got impingement and, and pinching in the shoulders, uh, don't go too high. And keep those hands apart a little bit more. The elbows will always be a little higher than the hands. How high you go is up to you. Seven seconds. All right, nice job. Grab your uh, your mat. One dumbbell, a larger dumbbell, and your mat. This is going to be on your back. Laying supine on your back here. Trying to get going as quick as I can here. All right. One dumbbell, so laying on your back. All right, so we'll go through quick pelvic tilt. A hook line position. We're gonna rotate pelvis backwards, bracing the core and abdominals uh, while breathing. All right, and just the hips are gonna rotate, low back is gonna flatten against the ground. Hold that position for a couple seconds and then relax. Rotate backwards, pelvic tilt and hold the abdominals tight. And then relax. Now pull over, so grab your dumbbell. Again, one dumbbell or kettlebell, whatever you can grab. Uh, safely, dry hands. We're gonna allow this to fall backwards as far as you feel comfortable. And then pull up right to uh, in line with gravity. So what you do is your pelvic tilt, hold that. Bring this back as far as you can comfortably. You can go all the way to the ground if you want, and then back up. And maybe, maybe you do that once or two or five times before you relax your pelvic tilt. 
tilt and hold and take a break if you want I'll uh, keep demonstrating I'll do this two or three times and then relax you may want that low back pushed against the ground firmly you'll find that as you're tilting the further that weight goes back towards the ground the more it wants to pop that pelvic tilt and pop your low back off the ground that's where you need to fight it and hold that tilt nice and tight when that weight gets further back behind you all right all right go ahead start again another set so I'll try this for a minute and again you know whether you do it one time or five times or, or you hold for the whole minute and do it it it's all up to you as long as you can hold that tilt that tilts, you know, one of the important parts. And then the pullover, we're getting upper, middle, back, the lats. Nice and controlled, no momentum. And see how many you can do with good form before you tire out and take a break. Tilt and hold. Keep breathing. Don't hold your breath at all. All right. Nice job. So 30 second break. Four exercises here. All right. What we have next? Uh, a little bit of cardiovascular here. So I'll kind of move some things around. Got a couple seconds to kill. Get your space organized so there's nothing to trip over. Don't want to. Don't want your mat to slip when you're stepping on it or something. All right, cardiovascular. So we're looking to get the heart rate elevated again. Another two and a half minutes or so, almost. So again, same thing, whatever you did last time, or you know, if there's something different that you want to do, kind of just depends on your coordination. Dance moves, especially if you've taken an aerobic step class or an aerobics class, a Zumba class, any of those classes, just use those steps or things that you enjoy, some sort of boot camp or fighting class, anything. Anything you remember from sports or dancing, ballroom, waltzing, line dancing, if you're in, you know, break dancing, <laughs> any of that sort of stuff, whatever, whatever works for you. And just try to move your limbs around. Controlled, but you know, we want a little bit of speed to things. Really, it's in, you know depends on you individually. What do you need to get your heart rate and your breathing elevated? If uh, sitting on a chair and, and marching your feet up and down and your and your arms up and down it works great for you, perfect. If you need to jump on your rowing machine and, and go all out for you know two minutes, again that's up to you. But what we try to do is we get the heart rate elevated through this you know two and a half minute spike. Of cardio and then you know heart rate will die down slightly as we do some of the strength training and then we hit the cardio again after about three exercises to get that heart rate spiked up so what we're trying to get is that heart rate elevated through the whole class all right we're, we're pretty low weight pretty high repetitions so it's a lot of a lot of movement not necessarily fast but you know, lighter weights means more repetitions. Hopefully we can keep this heart rate elevated at least slightly through the whole class. And then of course on cardios, spike it up so that it lingers a little more. All right, about 10 seconds here. How fast or slow you move is up to you. We'll do another three exercises. And then another cardio all right well done okay so we've got a uh, standing diagonal rotation so you're gonna need a dumbbell for this one dumbbell okay so what we're gonna do again a nice stance 
feet a good hip width apart or more. We're going to go with two hands on the dumbbell, kind of whatever is comfortable for you to, you know, for you to hold it. We're going to start down low on the outside of the hip. We're going to rotate the whole body and bring this dumbbell up across the shoulder to the opposite shoulder. Down here and across. So as I do this, I'm going to rotate my torso, my hips. I'm going to pivot and shift weight on my feet. You see my, my heels kind of swiveling back and forth. Starting on the outside of the hip. And then I do a diagonal up, across, and above my opposite shoulder. How high you go is up to you. Keep it controlled, not too fast. And then there's just a little bit of a rotation and a bend and squat at the bottom. And then really standing up nice and tall at the top. I've got 20 seconds here. The heavier the dumbbell or kettlebell or whatever you're using, the tougher it's going to be. Not too fast. There you go. Looking good there. Second set, we will just do the opposite direction, the other side. All right. Take a break there. I'm going to release the dumbbell. So again, second set, I'm just going to start low from the right side and then go up above the left. So the opposite of what I was just doing for myself. We're getting obliques and abdominal muscles during that rotation. Hip having to work. Uh, lower back and, and uh, spine stabilizers doing some work there. Legs and feet having to do some work for stabilization. Uh, we're getting some chest, back, lots of shoulders and arms involved there. All right, so let's try it again. In position. I'm going to start on the opposite side and up. Again, keep it comfortable. I'm just pivoting with my feet. Shifting weight back and forth from foot to foot. And then trying to bring my hands from the outside of the hip up above to the opposite shoulder. Straightening those elbows both directions if I can. So that dumbbell always kind of comes back to the chest before going to the bottom or to the top. Less than 10 seconds. Keep moving. All right, nice job there. Well done. All right, so next check says we have the get up and get down. All right, so you can do this one, uh, you know, grab your mat again, or if you have some pillows that you want to set down on the ground. Um, you know, have your chair for support or, or if you have a window seal or somewhere that you can help you get up and down if you need it. Okay. So what I'm looking here is I'm actually going to rotate it this way. I'm going to stand on my mat and I'm just going to get down on, on one knee, then the other, and then back up. All right. So down, down and up and up. Okay. And I can pick, you know, which knee I do what it's slow and controlled though. And again, if you have a good and thick mat or a nice soft carpet, this is going to be a lot easier. I'm not actively using my hands too much here, just more for support. Nice and controlled, slow, using that front leg to do most of the work. Back leg is helping also. This one's a little tougher to do. Especially if your knees are not super happy with you. Almost there. Five seconds. All right. Nice job there. Take a break. Grab a sip of water and we will do another set.
functional of course you know we've got to get up and down off the ground sometimes so it's functional to train that way also again window seal or something that can just give you a little bit of of help is always nice all right so let's try it again and go the other way now I've got to baby this right knee a little bit, especially on this direction. It's nice to have, again, a nice soft mat or good carpet or some pillows that you can kneel on. And then take your time. Even if you only get three or four repetitions in, in the minute again that's that works about 15 16 seconds and one more in here all right nice job there well done next exercise all right so chair plank you're going to need your chair. Again, something solid, something that's not going to tip on you or slip or slide on you. All right. So this one's a little more intense on the upper body. We're working the abdominals and the core, but most of our weight is going to be on our shoulders and chest and arms. So as we do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be right down where the feet of my, or I'm sorry, where the legs of my chair are. That way, I don't want this to do any kind of tipping, all right? So find a good spot on your chair to put your hands. You're going to walk your feet backwards a little bit. Heels can come off the ground. And then just lower your hips forward. Hands are right below the shoulders. And you're going to hold this position as long as you can comfortably. And then when you tire out, stand back up. Um, again, whatever's comfortable on the hands and the wrists, try to keep those elbows straight. Try to keep your hands right below your shoulders. Make sure that chair isn't going to slide or tilt. Head just looks down. You don't want to sag. And you don't want the, you know, the, the buns peaked way up here. So really bring those hips forward and down. Till you get to a good comfortable position and then hold take a break as you need to and yep we're at a break time here um, you know a little bit of fatigue and shaking is okay if you if you start to get out of form especially by letting that low back sag okay really engage your abdominal muscles pelvic tilt okay thrusting those hips forward clenching those cheeks together Trying to keep your body as straight as you can from your shoulders down to your ankles. And then again, trying to keep those elbows straight. All right, so back in position again, one more minute. And walk those feet back behind you. And then lower those hips, hold that position. You can go a little wider with the feet if you want depending on what gives you good stability. Keep breathing, don't hold your breath. And then take a break when you need to. Try to hold, you know, five second chunks or 10 second chunks or more. Dominoes are tight, hold that position. Hands are below the shoulders. Keep those elbows straight. Head is neutral. About seven, eight seconds left. All right, nice job there. Well done. Okay, so we've got our last cardio. So getting rid of your chair, clearing out your space. Uh, make sure your water's available. All right, I'm going to 
to do a little bit of sweeping across the body. And we got about 14 seconds till official start, but you can get going right away or take that break. Just sweeping arms and legs across the front of the body. Nice and controlled. All right, two minutes and 22 seconds left. Looking good there. One more time to spike up this heart rate, get the heart rate elevated, get your breathing elevated. There we go. All right, a little bit of a marching here. What I'm gonna do is start up top and pull down. Reach up above the head, pull down. So emphasize the pulling as opposed to the pushing up top. There you go. Pull down. Good posture. Breathing. Excellent. All right. I'm going to hinge forward slightly and with the legs straight, a little bit of a hip extension. Keep the elbows and arms straight. A little bit of shoulder movement here. There you go. Looking good. All right, so back to a march. Let's go a wide march, a minute left. Faster or slower, it's all up to you. Back to a narrow march. I'm gonna march a couple steps forward. A little kick, backwards, kick. How many steps you take will determine, or you know, will depend on, you know, how big of a space you have. Keep moving. 30 seconds. Excellent. All right, back to a regular narrow march here. Pump those arms. Let's go up and down. Rotating palms in and palms out when you go up and in when you come down. Keep that march up. Just keep waving those arms. Almost there. Excellent. All right, so let's slow that march down. Keep the arms moving. We are now into cool down. So same sort of movements for a little bit, but just at a slower pace. Let's go back to pumping those elbows. Nice and wide. Almost a tick tock back and forth with a bicep curl here. And slow it up even more. Just tick tocking back and forth. We're gonna add a little bit of balance in with our cool down. Uh, ideally, we want to get our heart rate uh, under 100 beats per minute. So if you're checking your heart rate, uh, under 100 beats per minute is kind of what we're shooting for. We just want to keep moving. You can grab your water bottle and walk around the house, that sort of stuff. We just don't want to stop moving until that heart rate gets uh, down a little lower. So what we'll do is we're going to start with some toe walking. Okay, so up on your toes and then walking side to side or back and forth. You can tick tock rocking in one, you know, if you want to grab your chair or the window seal and back and forth. But we'll, a little bit of a balance work here. Keeping moving, so our cardiovascular, getting some work, walking on those toes. Working the calf muscles. Now we're gonna go to our heels. All right, so some heel walking. Back and forth, same sort of thing. You can be in one spot or move around, but now toes are up in the air. So weights on our heels. Nice and easy, we're still moving. There you go, keep it up, keep going. All right, off.
awesome. So a little bit of a tightrope walk here. So just pretending that maybe you have a tightrope that's as wide as your hips, or maybe it's as wide as you know two of your feet together, or as wide as one foot. And then how big of a step you take is up to you, forwards or backwards. You know, again, depending on how much room you have to move around, be aware of what's around you. If I do heel to toe, of course, it gets even tougher. Maybe I close one eye. Now, this is even harder to do with one eye closed, or if you try with both eyes closed. Again, whatever is safe, but whatever gives you some work. I'm going to close my other eye. Just one eye closed here. And I'm just trying to feel the ground with my feet. Use my vision, peripheral vision especially, to know what's around me. You know, making sure I have nothing to trip over or, or slip on. All right, nice and easy. Okay, let's, uh, let's finish up with some stretches here. So we got a little bit of balance, a little bit of a cool down. Heart rate should be getting down a little better. So our first stretch, we're going to stretch the back of the thigh. So I'm going to put my weight on my back leg. Legs and toes are going to face forward. I'm going to dig the heel in on the leg that I'm stretching right in front of me here. And I'm kind of squatting down and leaning forward until I feel that stretch behind my thigh, behind my knee. Could feel that in the calf or the rump. Nice and gentle. Keep holding that. Nice and gentle. No bouncing, no jerking. Let's switch legs here. Try to hold a good 15 or more seconds. Real easy. Think of good posture and always breathing. Trying to relax your body, especially this thigh. We want to relax the thigh. All right, well done here. So another stretch we're going to do is for the upper back, middle back. So what I'll do is I'll pelvic tilt like what we did on the ground. So thrusting those hips forward, that low back uh, straightens and flattens out. I'm going to clench the cheeks on my rear together. I'm going to look at my palms with my fingers interlaced together. And then push those hands away from the body. I'm rounding out my upper back, my middle back. A little bit of a stretch in the arms and the forearms. And again, just holding that position and breathing. Almost there. All right, excellent. Well done. One more stretch here. So we're going to go up 90 degrees from the uh, armpit area and, and the elbow area. And then I'm going to bring those arms backwards, really pushing my chest out. We're trying to stretch the chest and the fronts of the shoulders. I can bring those hands together. If you get a better stretch holding on to your hands or behind your ears or head. Nice deep breathing. And then let's straighten those elbows, thumbs are back, palms are up, and now I'm going to dip those fingers down. So I'm stretching out my forearms and my arms, my wrists and palms, and again, chest and shoulders. Keep breathing. All right, and shake it all out. Well done today. All right, thank you for being here.